Samorlin, the peptide that's able to increase our body's own production of growth hormone. Today we're going to talk about how increasing growth hormone can help in an anti-aging context from increasing muscle mass, decreasing fat mass, enhancing slow wave deep sleep, enhancing energy production, as well as enhancing collagen synthesis in the context of improving hair, skin, and nails quality. We're going to dive into how Samorlin works, its mechanism of action, its benefits, its potential side effects, and who would be a good candidate for using this peptide. So if you're interested in Samorlin and how it, <laughs> essentially everything that I just mentioned, this video should answer all those questions. So what is Samorlin? So Samorlin is an analog of a naturally produced hormone within the brain called growth hormone releasing hormone or GHRH. So a little overview about how growth hormone is naturally produced and this will allow us to better understand what Samorlin actually is and how it works. So within the hypothalamus, the central portion of the brain, a hormone is released called growth hormone releasing hormone. This then travels to another portion of the brain called the pituitary gland, or specifically the anterior pituitary gland. And then when this GHRH then stimulates the anterior pituitary gland, the anterior pituitary gland, specifically the cells called somatotrophs, release what's called growth hormone into circulation. Growth hormone then travels around the body and it can have a multitude of beneficial effects that we'll get into a little bit later, including the increased muscle mass, the increased fat loss, the enhanced energy, et cetera. But the body has a natural regulator or rhythm or a homeostatic mechanism that's in place to regulate the amount of growth hormone that's released. And this is done through another hormone called somatostatin. So somatostatin is also known as growth hormone inhibiting hormone. And so the growth hormone that's naturally produced is in a pulsatile fashion. It can be increased when we're in a fasted state. It can be increased when we have proper sleep at night. It can be increased in response to workouts to help with recovery. But when the growth hormone levels aren't necessarily needing to be elevated, the body produces somatostatin or that growth hormone inhibiting hormone and it blocks activation of the growth hormone. And so growth hormone isn't always being produced, but it's being regulated on a pulsatility or a uh, being produced on a pulsatile fashion. So back to what Samorlin is. So again, Samorlin is an analog of the actual top-down growth hormone releasing hormone. So that growth hormone releasing hormone is 44 amino acids long. And the amino acids one through 29 is the minimum biological sequence that if we were to chop that 44 amino acids and take it out that we could use to actually still stimulate growth hormone release. And that chopped out portion of that 44 amino acids or amino acids one through 29 is exactly what Samorlin is. So Samorlin is a bioidentical version of growth hormone releasing hormone from the amino acid one to the 29th amino acid. And so when we take Samorlin, it is able to bind to that growth hormone releasing hormone receptor on the anterior pituitary gland and in a pulsatile fashion stimulate the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary. So why would we want to do this if our body already produces growth hormone releasing hormone, it can already bind to the anterior pituitary and release growth hormone into circulation, given that we have no disease state present other than aging, if we want to consider that the disease in conversation currently. The reason being is that as we age around our 20s to 30s, our natural growth hormone levels tend to decline. And it tends to decline in part because of the desensitization of the actual GHRH receptors on the pituitary gland. It also may be because of the increase in somatostatin or that increased uh, growth hormone inhibiting hormone or just the decrease in the release of growth hormone releasing hormone. It's more than likely though a combination of all the above. So what's problematic about having decreased growth hormone levels? So growth hormone is important for increasing muscle mass, decreasing fat mass, enhancing bone mass, improving energy substrate utilization, or essentially our, our body's ability to improve energy, as well as the increase in collagen production. And so inversely, if we don't have optimal levels or have very low levels of growth hormone, all of those areas can take a hit essentially. And what that looks like as we age is the increased difficulty in in <laughs> increasing muscle mass, the increased fat mass, or the inability to lose fat as efficiently as we did once when we were younger. Also, we could have increased fine lines and wrinkles or skin thinning. We see that a lot in the elderly population. Um, decreased ability to recover from workouts or actual uh, injuries themselves. We could have 
decreases in bone mass, which we see often in osteopenia and osteoporosis, and we also see hair loss. And so the reason that we would want to use a peptide like Samorlin to keep optimal growth hormone levels or at the top of the reference range is because of all the benefits just previously mentioned. So now let's look at each one of the benefits just a little bit closer. So Samorlin's able to increase fat loss by its ability to enhance the sensitivity of what's called hormone sensitive lipase. So hormone sensitive lipase is present on fat cells. And when we have increased in catecholamines or epinephrine or norepinephrine, it binds to those fat cells and then causes them to be broken down and released into circulation. And then other cells that need them for energy essentially utilize the fat or stored fuel as energy. So when we have increased growth hormone levels via the stimulation of the anterior pituitary to increase growth hormone from utilizing Samorlin, we're able to actually increase the body's ability to break down stored fat itself. It's also able to decrease what's called lipoprotein lipase, an enzyme that's required for storing um, fatty acids as fat tissue. And so with the utilization of Samorlin, we can increase the actual breakdown and decrease the actual uh, synthesis of fat tissue. Another benefit of utilizing Samorlin or increasing growth hormone levels is the increase in muscle mass. And this is primarily driven through a downstream metabolite of growth hormone called IGF-1. So IGF-1 stands for insulin-like growth factor one, and it can be produced within the liver and then also some within other peripheral tissues such as skeletal muscle or uh, fat. But what, growth or what IGF-1 does is it's able to stimulate mTOR and then subsequently protein synthesis. And so protein synthesis is required for the actual taking of amino acids or proteins that we consume through our diet and then growing muscle, whether it be to actually just increase overall lean mass or in response to um, hormetic stressors like exercise or weightlifting or just maintaining the skeletal muscle that one has as they age. And so IGF-1 is able to do this directly. Another unique um, capability of IGF-1 is it can stimulate what's called satellite cells. And these satellite cells are actually local stem cells that are stored within the muscle tissue. And when activated, they can help with regeneration, recovery, and potentially some hyperplasia, which means the growth or splitting of new muscle cells. And so increasing the actual overall fiber count of the, or myocyte count of the muscles themselves. So another benefit of increasing growth hormone through Samorlin is the improvements in hair, skin, and nails that a lot of patients report and that we see. And this is also done through that downstream metabolite called IGF-1. So IGF-1 is able to bind to the fibroblast receptors that are found within the dermal tissue and actually improve the collagen synthesis that occurs. And this, usually results in what we see as improved uh, elasticity within the dermal tissue or the skin itself. We see decreases in fine lines and wrinkles, and we see better recovery and hydration of that actual tissue. It also works in this area by increasing the epidermal keratinocytes or stimulating the epidermal keratinocytes, which are vital for the production and turnover of new skin cells. It may also have effects with increasing the uh, production of glycosaminoglycans and hyaluronic acid, which helps with the hydration of the skin, as well as increasing elastin, which is another protein that's vital for that skin tuger or the um, elasticity and strength of the skin. What we also see with hair is that IGF-1 is able to bind to what's called the dermal papilla cells, and this is able to increase what's called the antigen phase of hair growth. So hair growth has multiple phases, but the antigen phase is the actual growth phase itself. And so when we can increase that, the hair growth can be more robust, stronger, longer, and work a little bit faster. And this is important in the aging context in that hair naturally thins as we age and it can end up falling out more often in men than women. But if we're able to increase the growth phase of the hair that we can often see thicker and healthier and stronger hair because of that IGF-1 stimulation. Samorlin is also able to improve patient sleep, and this is often what I hear when patients go on Samorlin is that they're having some of the best sleep that they've had in a very long time. And this is because growth hormone is relatively tightly regulated to the sleep architecture itself, specifically the slow wave sleep, which is an important part of our sleep cycle that helps with physical 
and neurologic recovery. And so when we utilize Samorlin, often prior, prior to bed, we can have that increase in growth hormone, which can often correct or enhance the actual sleep architecture and slow wave deep sleep, which results in better physical, like I said, recovery and an enhanced energy that patients often experience the next day. Another area of research that's starting to develop around how growth hormone and IGF-1 work at a cellular level is its impact on mitochondrial biogenesis, specifically through a protein called PGC-1-alpha, which is important for mitochondrial biogenesis or the creation of new mitochondria. So the healthier and more dense we can have mitochondria within cells, the more efficient often that we can utilize energy and produce energy and reduce inflammation and help with overall physiologic functioning and aging. Another benefit that we often see with the utilization of growth hormone releasing peptides or growth hormone secretagogues like Samorlin is the improvement in cognition and cognitive energy. This is likely through the stimulation again of that IGF-1, but IGF-1 within the brain can be neuroprotective and help with stimulating the formation of new neurons or dendritic outgrowth, which is another part of a neuron, and synaptogenesis. And so this may also correlate with the cognitive decline that we see as aging. So assumably speaking here, and again, very multifactorial, but if growth hormone levels are declining as we age and they play an important role in neurogenesis and the protection of neurons within the brain, it can be assumed that increasing growth hormone allows for better protection and healthy aging of the brain and central nervous system itself. So this all sounds great, but are there any potential side effects? And with increased growth hormone levels, some of the side effects that we can see is increased water retention because of the mineral retention or content that can occur within tissues and increasing the growth factors there. And we can also see increases in blood glucose levels. But we don't often see this with the growth hormone releasing peptides because we're not interrupting the natural negative feedback loop that's occurring. So what does that mean? It means that when we're utilizing Samorlin, we're able to take advantage of the body's own production of growth hormone rather than using actual recombinant human growth hormone or synthetic HGH, both the same thing. But when we use synthetic HGH, and there is a place for it, but when we do use it, we're overriding the system. We're going downstream and the body then doesn't have the ability to control when the growth hormone gets too high and essentially work to have a counterbalance through that somatostatin pathway. When we're using Samorlin, we're able to allow the body to produce the naturally produced and bioidentical form of the growth hormone itself. But if growth hormone levels start to get too high and there starts to become physiologic problematic effects, the body will just naturally produce somatostatin or the growth hormone inhibiting hormone and then regulate itself there. So that's an important factor to consider. Also, it's that Samorlin has a relatively short half-life. Once we inject it, it plasma concentration peaks around 20 to 30 minutes and it's excreted quite quickly. But the cascade of the biologic activity or the um, effects on growth hormone and IGF-1 last a little bit longer or within a few hours, but it is within a shorter period of time. It's not lasting days and it's not lasting weeks, which we look at as beneficial because we're able to strategically and precisely use this increase in growth hormone through the utilization of Samorlin within areas that we want to per se. So if we want to use it before a workout to help with increased fat loss, consider it be fasting there. Or if we want to use it right before bed, like I previously talked about, to enhance sleep and take advantage of that natural growth hormone secretion to help with recovery in the aging process, we absolutely can versus using, again, that exogenous growth hormone, which can have some side effects. So overall, you know, each patient reacts differently to each medication or peptide, but generally speaking, growth hormone the growth hormone releasing peptide Samorlin has a relatively safe profile of use. So who would benefit from taking Samorlin? Samorlin can be used to help with aging. So if somebody is at the time in their life where they're starting to have difficulty putting on muscle mass or having a harder time with losing fat or their energy levels are decreasing or if they're starting to see changes uh, drastic changes to their hair, skin, nails, this would be maybe a time to start considering the use of a growth hormone releasing peptide called Samorlin. It's important to make sure that you're working with a medical provider who can monitor lab work because there can be side effects and each patient is individualized and there's a lot of physiologic or pathologic circumstances that may preclude the use of Samorlin. So don't 
be buying this on your own. Don't be getting it from these research websites that probably don't have what they're saying is actually in it or any problematic additives. Um, and other situations in which we could use Smorlin is with patients, again, as they age, of having significantly increased muscle mass or a unique context or situation in which we can use it is along with GLP-1 agonists, whether that be semaglutide, trisepatide, or the new GLP-1 agonist, reditrutide. And the reason that we would wanna use this alongside of these weight loss medications is that it works through a different pathway than them. So we could have a synergistic effect, not only from the fat loss, but one of the big issues with GLP-1 agonists and big concerns is that patients are losing lean mass, meaning muscle mass or bone mass, alongside the fat mass. And so when we utilize Samorlin or another growth hormone releasing peptide, we're able to help maintain that lean muscle mass while improving the fat mass or the fat loss along with the GLP-1 agonist. So that would be another situation in which we could do it. So if you have any questions about Samorlin that I didn't answer in this video, leave them in the comments below. Like, subscribe, do all that good stuff as we're trying to grow the channel. And thanks for watching.